Hello and welcome back to Calculus 2. Today we're going to talk about the exponential function. Today we're going to review the exponential function, which is the inverse of the natural log function. We'll discuss Euler's constant, the properties of exponential functions, and then we'll look at the calculus of exponential functions. We start off with a differential equation, dy dt equals ky, where k is a constant. Now, what we observe is we're saying something very important. We're saying that the rate of change of some function is proportional to the value of the function itself. We apply the technique separation of variables. We put everything with y on one side and everything with the variable t on the other. And what we see is that dy over y equals k dt, working in terms of differentials. If we integrate both sides, we get the natural log of the absolute value of y is kt plus a constant of integration. So what we need now is to apply the inverse function of the natural log in order to solve for y. We start off by defining Euler's constant. E is the inverse natural log of 1. We generalize this and say that e to the x is the inverse natural log of x. This leads us to two very important identities of the inverse functions. e to the natural log of x is just x for all x greater than 0. Because remember, the domain of natural log of x is x greater than 0. Our other identity is that the natural log of e to the x is x. And that's true for all x. Because e to the x is going to be defined on the domain negative infinity to positive infinity. We know that when we graph the natural log function, the values of y ranged from negative infinity to positive infinity. Once again, we recall the law of exponents. And the first law we'll see is that e to the x1 times e to the x2 is equal to e to the x1 plus x2. So you can see the corrected equation, e to the x1 times e to the x2 is e to the x1 plus x2. Another very important law of exponents is e to the negative x is equal to 1 over e to the x. We can clearly rewrite that as e to the x equals 1 over e to the negative x. Both identities hold true. And here is a third very important law of exponents. e to the x1 over e to the x2 equals e to the x1 minus x2. You can see that that clearly comes from the fact that e to the x1 over e to the x2 can be written as e to the x1 times e to the negative x2. So we're applying the last two rules that we discussed earlier. And here is another very important rule of exponents. e to the x to the power n equals e to the nx. And you recall these rules really do apply through algebraic expressions where the base is not necessarily a number, but even a variable. And now we come to the calculus of the exponential function. Just like before when we said that the inverse of the logarithm function had a very important differential equation associated with it, 
that plays a key role in this result. The derivative with respect to x of e to the u is e to the u times du dx using the chain rule. So what we're saying is that the exponential function is a function whose derivative is proportional to the original value of y. And if u is a functional power, by using the chain rule, we can calculate the derivative of that function just by multiplying by du dx. Now let's take a look at some concrete examples. These are exponential functions, and we would like practicing the process of taking derivatives of them. Let's take a look at the first one. y is equal to 6 times e to the 4x. So suppose y is equal to 6 times e to the 4x. dy dx is 6 times e to the same power, e to the 4x, times the derivative of the power, which is 4. So we get 24 e to the 4x. And we look at another example. Suppose that y is equal to e to the x squared. Then dy dx is going to be e to the same power times the derivative of the power. So it's e to the x squared times 2x. And the derivative then is just 2x e to the x squared. Now let's take a look at another interesting example which we've already seen in a previous lecture. y equals x to the x. We rewrite it as y equals e to the natural log of x times x. So y equals e to the x natural log of x. To take the derivative, it's e to the same power times the derivative of the power, and we apply the product rule there. So we get the same answer we got last time using logarithmic differentiation. dy dx equals y times 1 plus the natural log of x. Or dy dx equals x to the x times 1 plus the natural log of x. Thank you for joining us. Hope you can come back next time.